Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to start talking about prayer and I'm going to do a few videos on prayer because many of us don't know how to pray. We don't know what to say. We don't know what prayer is about. But the Bible actually gives us the keys, the truths on how to pray. And Jesus gave us a way to pray. In the Bible, you find how Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, what he told them about prayer. And I'm going to talk all about that in these videos. But today, I'm going to focus on the Lord's Prayer. Because Jesus didn't give this as the only way we can pray. He didn't give this prayer so that we can just pray this, finish and done, few seconds. No, this was a model. This was the example he gave. And I'm going to evaluate everything for you so that you can know how to pray. But first, let's read it. You find the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6, verse 9 to 13. And you also find it in the Gospel of Luke. But we're not going to do that today. But the Bible says, New Living Translation, Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins. As we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Now I'm going to break it down in six things. And it actually covers everything we need to pray for. Number one, worshiping the Father. It says, Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. So the first thing we need to do in prayer, and before I go into this, sorry, you don't have to do it in this order. You don't have to follow a certain rule. Okay, I'm going to pray like this, then this, then this. I'm just doing this to explain everything to you and to help you to pray better, to understand better. Because many people don't know what to say, what to pray. But I'm using this as an example to you. Don't make prayer a religious thing, a routine you do that you don't like. Prayer is there for us to enjoy, to spend time in God's presence and to give God our presence. Because believe it or not, God wants us to pray, spend time with Him because He likes our presence. But the first thing is worshiping the Father. He says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your name be kept holy. So when you pray, pray first to God. Our Father in heaven, holy of holies, hallowed be your name. I praise you, I worship you. Thank you for your provision, God, that I know I can trust you. Pray everything that you are thankful for towards God. What God means to you in your life, what he has done for you in your life. Pray that prayer. Use it in your prayer to start with. If you know the names of God, like Jehovah Jireh, our provider, use those names. Yahweh, the great I am, the good shepherd. If you know those names, use it and thank God for the meaning behind it. He's our provider. He's our shepherd. He protects and leads us. The second thing is God's kingdom. It says, may your kingdom come soon. Now the kingdom of God. We all know it's coming soon. Matthew 6 verse 33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Ask God to fill you with His love. Ask God to help you to think as a citizen of heaven. Ask God to change your mind and heart so that you can be more like Him. In the series we're going to do the Holy Spirit, you'll see me talking about this as well. When the Spirit lives in you, you're a temple of the Holy Spirit. So ask God to bring His kingdom to earth. The third thing, God's will and His guidance. And when we read it, it says, May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In your prayer, ask God to help you. No matter what you're going through, ask for His leading and guidance. Ask God that His will takes place in your life because His will is always better than yours. His plans are better than yours. But with that aside, when you're going for a job interview, when you have a test tomorrow, Whatever you're doing, ask God to help you, to lead you, to guide you, and He will. The fourth thing, our daily needs. We read, give us today the food we need, verse 11. Now it's talking about food, but it means our daily needs. Ask God for everything you need, because we know we're dependent on God, but we know He's our provider. So when you pray, ask God, God, give us today food on our table something to drink, 
money, provision, a job. You can pray for anything you want and you can know that God will answer you. He hears you when you pray. He sees you when you pray and He will answer you. That's why we pray. We don't pray just to say words and stuff. If you pray and you believe that your prayers are being heard, God will give it to you. Number five, forgiveness, relationships. And we read in verse 12, And forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. Now, we need to ask God to forgive us. And the good thing is He will. Because Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, we are forgiven. We receive grace and mercy. But it's not a one-way street. We need to forgive others. Because how can God forgive us for all that we've done if we can't forgive others for what they've done towards us? And trust me, we've sinned more against God than they sinned against us. So forgive others. Ask God to help you to forgive them. You can do that. Ask God, Lord, help me to forgive them. Help me to let go of what they did. Help me to let go of my past and ask that you will forgive me for holding this grudge so long. But set me free. I'm sorry. Because staying mad at someone is like drinking poison and expecting them to die. It doesn't work that way. So forgive others. Let it go. Because then you will see, you will feel joy and peace like you've never felt it before. And God will forgive you. He will make you as wide as will and He will never ever look at your sin again. There's no condemnation in Christ. Yes, you will feel guilt and shame when you do sin, but that's conviction. And it comes and it goes. If you're struggling with shame and guilt, if it doesn't let you go, ask God, God, help me to let go of shame. Help me to let go of guilt. Because I know I'm forgiven. That's a lie the enemy uses to make you feel like God hasn't forgiven you. And that's not true. We receive grace and mercy and God has forgiven you. So no, when you feel shame and guilt after you've repented, ask God, help me to let go of shame and guilt. And I want to tell you this truth. You are forgiven, you are set free, you are made new, and you don't need to feel guilty or shame anymore because God forgets about your sin and He forgave you. So every time you start to feel guilty or shame, say this in your head, I'm forgiven, I'm set free, God's not mad anymore, that sin doesn't have a grip over me anymore, that's not who I am anymore. You will see, you will start to feel better. You will have joy and peace back and you will come to God more boldly than ever before. And the final thing is spiritual warfare. Let's go to verse 13. It says, And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. That's spiritual warfare. Our fight is not against flesh and blood. We know that. It's a spiritual war. The devil will try to tempt you, get you into addiction, get you into every sinful thing there is. Demons will try to attack you, but you have the Holy Spirit, so you don't need to be afraid because they're scared when they know God is with you and He's always with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will fight for you. And if He is for you, no one can be against you. So ask God to protect you from the evil one. Ask God to give you self-control so that you don't fall into temptation. Ask the Holy Spirit to live within you, to dwell within you, and to move through you. Because then you will see miracles happen all around you. Because when you surrender to the Holy Spirit, miracles start to happen. You start to change. People around you start to change. Your situation changes. Your mindset changes. Everything changes. So these are just the things you can pray about by the model we gave. And I'm going to go all through all six again. And I want you to know, you don't have to pray the things I said. You can pray anything you want. This is a universal thing. It covers everything. The first one is worshiping the Father. The second thing, God's kingdom. The third thing, God's will and guidance. The fourth thing, our daily needs. The fifth thing, forgiveness and relationships. And the sixth thing, spiritual warfare. So I encourage you, Implement these things in your prayer. Use them. Use the model God gave us in the Bible to help you to grow in your prayer, to help you pray with more confidence. Because remember, it's just a conversation between you and God. You don't have to follow these strict rules, but I'm giving them to you because Jesus gave them to us as a guideline on how to pray. But God is your Father. You are His child. Just talk to Him. 
pray and say what you want to say. But if you don't know what to pray, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, to help you, and use what we get in the Bible to aid you in your prayer life. Now next week we're going to go further. We're going to use other passages where Jesus taught us how to pray. And I hope that after this video, after the next one, and after the last one, you will feel like a real prayer warrior, that you will pray with more confidence, and that prayer will no longer be something that scares you, that prayer will no longer be something that you struggle with. So I want to thank you for watching, and I truly hope that you will now start to grow in prayer, and that prayer will start to be a delight in your life. May God bless you today.